So you want to get into carving. The big question is where do you start? There are lots of choices out there. So today we're going to take a look at what you should know before you jump in and uh, how to actually get started. Let's take a look. One of the scary things about carving is every time you see a video, the carver has a pile of tools. And this is just one of the rolls I have. I've got a few more of them over there. And there are lots of different places you could go with them. But where exactly do you start? Is there one particular chisel you should get before? Or is there a particular starter set that can get you off right? So first off, I want to talk about the tools. Usually when someone gets into it, they think, ooh, I need to go buy a full set of carving chisels. That way I can do carving because I'm going to need them all, right? And anytime you're watching a video about someone doing carving, they have a set of chisels out. The thing is, for most basic carving that I do, simple things, I'm only going to use one or two chisels total out of everything I have. And in all honesty, 80 to 90% of all the carving I've done is done with like four or five chisels on this end of the roll. The rest of them are just for that one-off rare need where I gotta have that chisel to make this particular profile. And so usually I'm gonna say, don't go buy a whole set of chisels. You don't need a whole set of chisels. When you get first get started, you're only gonna need two or three chisels total. And in all reality, you probably already have the first chisel you need to get started. A bench chisel. You can do a lot with this. And for the first year or so of me carving, that's what I did all my carving with, is a set of bench chisels. It is honestly rather amazing what you can do with just a bench chisel. Whether you want to do simple chip carving, this can be done very, very easily with a bench chisel. Or if you want to get into something a little more organic, you can do that too. This is the first thing I ever carved. It is my first hand carving, and it is done completely with a set of bench chisels. As a matter of fact, I actually did this with Harbor Freight chisels. Yes, you can do this with probably something you already have on hand. And if you want to see that, I actually will show you... <laughs> and if you want to see that, I will leave a link to making this down in the description below, as well as a couple of videos talking about how I go and make that format. And one of the key things you'll learn from this channel is it's best to just jump in. Dive in, grab a chisel, grab a board, just go to town, have some fun and experiment, try it, and you'll be amazed at how much fun you can have. Will it be perfect? No. Will it look amazing? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But I can guarantee you it will look miles better than just a flat, smooth surface. And it is something that you can do. Just try it, and you'll never know until you actually do dive in and try it. Have some fun and experiment, and you might be amazed at what you can do. So you've done the bench chisel thing, and you'd actually like to start getting into something that's a little bit more organic and fun, and uh... So, you've done the bench chisel thing, and you want to start getting into something that's, well, a little, uh, more. In that case, then, don't go out and buy a full set of chisels. Most all of the work you're going to want to do in the future can be done with just a V-tool, a skew, one gouge, and a bench chisel. And you can do almost all the carving you want to do with just those tools. I'm going to be talking about lots of other resources and links. Go down in the description below and I will have them all laid out there. So if you have any questions about this, take a look in the description and you'll probably see a link to it. It's usually around this point I tell people, first, go take a look at Mary May. Her website is absolutely amazing and she has several free courses that you can take that can get you into carving. Now I have to warn you, she is a little bit more of the sculptural carver. She does more of the really high-end detailed three-dimensional things and does a lot of it amazingly well. So a lot of the information she gets is geared towards that. And for most people, starting off with doing some simple surface carving will be the next step. But all the steps she's going to take you through will show you this really easily. So what should be your first carving chisel purchase? I would suggest a V-tool. A simple V-tool can do an incredible amount. And if you're wanting to do basic surface carving, that may be the only tool you need. This can do lines, it can do surfaces, it can do slight three-dimensional surfaces. A V-tool is kind of the basic carving tool you're gonna need for any project. This is one where you get it, you will use it in every carving project you have. Next on the list, is a basic skew. A really simple skew, skew, it has a double bevel, a bevel on both sides of the plane, and rather than being flat across like a bench chisel, it's at an angle. This allows you to get into corners and nooks and crevices and really kind of detail things. I don't use this in every project, uh, but it's probably the second most used one because if I need it, I kind of need it. But that being said, you don't always need a skew. A lot of times you can do it with a carving knife, and I've a lot of times used my simple marking knife. This can get into a lot of those corners and do that detail work you need. But getting a good chip carving knife or something a little more detailed and sculpted, uh, these can get you into a little more details. Uh, it's amazing how often you're going to use a knife when doing organic carving. 
every other tool you're going to ever buy is a specialty tool. 99.9% .9 of the other tools out there are gouges. In other words, they're a round curve. And they come in every different radius and width and size and bent neck and in channel and out channel and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of different gouges out there. And so if you buy a set of them, the chances of the six gouges you get being the six gouges you're going to use all the time are very rare because from this point on, you generally buy the tool you need for the project you're going to do. So that's why generally I say don't buy a full set. Most all the sets are going to come with a V-tool, they're going to come with a skew and a straight chisel, but then everything else is just a variant of a gouge. And so at that point, you're not going to use them that often. The exception to that might be a vayner, which is kind of like a V-tool, except for it's a U, and the sides are straight rather than making a standard circumference like you would find on a gouge. But even those, I don't use them very often, and they come in a bunch of different shapes, so generally buy these for the project you need. You don't need a vayner for every project. And usually at this point in the discussion, I'm still going to get the question, okay, but I, I, I really want to buy a set. Which set should I buy? And I'll leave a link to my suggested beginning set down there, and you'll realize it's a small set. And that's because you have a few tools that you're going to use quite often, and then the rest of them you have to buy them specific for the project. So if you buy a full set of 12, you're going to use your V-tool, you're going to use your skew, you might use the straight chisel in here, or you might just use your bench chisel, both will work just fine. But then you get to all these other gouges, and you know, a bent neck gouge with that particular radius, I'm not going to use it that often. Most of the time I'm going to end up going and buying a whole nother gouge because the gouge I need isn't in this set. And yeah, I'm probably going to use most of these because they're close enough I can make them work, but it would be much better off if I started with the basics and then bought the exact gouge I needed to make it work precisely. That makes carving a lot easier and a lot more fun because then you're using the right tool for the job, not just, mm, I have this gouge, it's close enough, I think I can make it work. Okay. Now, let's talk about brands, and I'm going to break this down pretty simple because in America, there aren't as many choices. If you're in Europe, there are thousands of choices, and a lot of them are very, very equal. But generally, I'm going to say file. They're the octagonal handles that are really nice and smooth. They are my absolute favorite. They are, uh, they're just generally considered to be about the best chisels on the market. They come sharp, ready to use, and amazing. But they're expensive. You might be spending $40, $50, $60, $100 hundred dollars on a single chisel. Is it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. Next up are two cherries. And uh, I really, really like these. They are, they're really, really good. They're not quite as amazing as a file chisel, but they are very, very good. These will last you for a lifetime. They are things you can hand down. And they are relatively affordable in comparison. Uh, so usually if you're looking for something that's not the highest end, but it's not the cheapest thing, uh, two cherries is what I'm gonna say. They are a very good bang for the buck. Next up we have Shaft, um, and I really like these. They are a step down in quality as well as price. Um, you're gonna find them really affordable. Most of the time they're like two dollars, uh, most of the time they're about 10 bucks uh, a piece. However, generally you have to buy them in sets. I haven't found a good place where I can buy them individually, though I'm sure there's some place out there that does. These are, are really good. The handles are shaped a lot like the file. The heads are very shaped, but you're gonna notice that some of them, the quality isn't quite the same. They're just not up to the same scratch. They're good steel, they'll last you a lifetime. Uh, they may or may not come sharpened, and so you're gonna have to spend a little more work with these. But once you get them up and running, these will last you for a lifetime, and they're really good chisels. They're just gonna, they're just not quite the fit and finish you're gonna find with others. Next, we're gonna come down to antiques. And antiques come in all different sizes, formats, shapes, and styles, and you're really kind of, rolling the dice. Sometimes, most of the time, you're going to have pretty decent steel. If they've lasted this long, they're going to be pretty decent steel, and they're going to take a little bit of work. But a lot of times, the handles aren't great. Um, they're always going to need to be sharpened, and a lot of times, the last person hit them on a grinder, and they really need a lot of work. So these, you can generally pick them up for five to ten dollars a piece if they need some work, but they're going to take a lot of work. And if you're first getting started, you might be better off getting a better tool that you just know is going to work. I used to recommend these Narex uh, bent steel chisels, and for the price, they're really not that bad. It's relatively decent steel. Um, they're kind of wimpy, and they're a little small, um, but they're not bad for the price. And I used to say this would be the one to get until I came across Shaft Tools, and honestly, uh, for the price, these are the ones I'm going to recommend. If you're on a budget, this is what you should be looking for. Now you may notice down at the end here I have these, which are Harbor Freight chisels, and I keep these as a warning to people. Do not, do not. Do not 
And once more, I repeat, do not buy the Harbor Freight carving chisel set. Number one, they're not carving chisels. They are not carving chisels. They are not even turning chisels. These are scrapers that they decided to sell as chisels. And even as scrapers, they're bad scrapers. Do not buy the Harbor Freight or anything that looks like this where you see the two rings here and they're all shaped like this and they go by a bunch of different names. They're sold in a bunch of different companies. Don't buy them. You will waste your money. I generally don't talk about sharpening systems as much because whatever sharpening you're going to be using for your bench chisels is going to work for most of your regular carving chisels. Most of the time, I do not let these get dull enough so they do not have to go back to my sharpening stones. I keep a strop on the bench and I strop them every five minutes and I keep them sharp. You keep them honed and you will never have to take them back and sharpen them unless you drop them on a concrete floor and then you're gonna have to do a lot of work. And then that's a whole nother video. So I'll leave a link to those videos down in the description below with all the others. Carving is one of those subjects where there are thousands of different styles and types and methods from chip carving to surface carving to sculptural carving and everything in between and different methods and using knives and using chisels and power carving and the list goes on and on and on and on and this really isn't intended to be a intro to carving. I just want to say what do you need to actually get started into it and it's one of those things where you're going to experiment a few times and you're going to find out that you really like doing this particular method, this particular style. And then you can hone in that particular style and get the tools you need for that style. Some people will find out that they just don't enjoy it that much. And some people will absolutely love it. And this is a rabbit hole that you can dive down and never come back from. And eventually you're going to find out that all of the wooden tools in your shop are carved and uh, you've kind of become an addict. And no one quite likes that because that's the place where you store things and eventually they die. I know this video is gonna bring up lots of other questions, so go look at all the links down in the description down below. I have lots of resources down there and other places to go and look and things that you can find out about, recommended tools and the like. And if you do have further questions, let me know in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many of them as I can possibly get to. So thank you. Uh, that actually does help out the channel anytime you put a comment down below. Thank you. Uh, you are helping us grow. And as well as that and hitting the like, the share, subscribe, uh, you know all those things. They do help us. They help the channel grow. They help us get in front of more people. And that means a lot. On top of that, there are a bunch of people scrolling over here. Those are the patrons on Patreon and they are the ones who quite literally keep this channel going. Uh, without patrons and members, we wouldn't exist. We are sponsored by you. So thank you. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to patreon.com. Uh, go, there's links down below because I've been talking about links this whole video. <laughs> there's more information down there or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. And we have special perks for both and thank you. Without you guys, we wouldn't exist. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh, this video took a lot out of me. I mean, you could say I've been gouged out. The reason it's called a chisel is because you buy one and you end up having to buy another one and buy another one and buy another one and soon you realize that the company is just chiseling you out of more money.